Hi, and welcome to our video, 8.2, The Nature of Covalent Bonding. Here we're going to go a little bit deeper into how covalent bonds work. Uh, similar to ionic bonds, covalent bonds are going to try to follow the octet rule. Now, in forming covalent bonds, electron sharing usually occurs so that atoms attain the electron configuration of noble gases. Uh, very, very similar, once again, to ionic bonds. So we'll start here with a simple one, hydrogen, right? So hydrogen has a single electron. Right here comes another hydrogen with its single electron. And they join and they share these two electrons. So at any given point in time, these two electrons can be with this hydrogen, or they can be with this hydrogen. Either way, each hydrogen atom has two electrons around it, which makes it similar to helium with a complete outer shell. So we're going to also look at now the difference between an electron dot formula and a structural formula. The structural formula doesn't quite use these dots here. We'll just use a line like I showed you in the last video. Okay, So if we have fluorine, which you also saw in the last video, right? fluorine, so it's F2, which is F dot 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 with its seven electrons. And now here's the other one with its seven electrons and they share. Each fluorine has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight electrons around it. Can also be drawn like so. Okay, so they're looking to follow the octet rule to look like the noble gas. Uh, the hydrogen helium one is kind of an exception. It's looking like the noble gas, but right in that first shell, there's only rule for the two electrons. Sometimes, in order to achieve those eight electrons, or that, that octet, atoms will have to share two or three pairs of electrons. So, for example, oxygen, very common, O2, it's what's in the air around this. Oxygen has six electrons, so you have form up like so. Here's an oxygen. One, two, three, four, five, six. And here's the other oxygen. One, two, three, four, five, six. So each one is going to have around it, I draw a little thing here. So this oxygen, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight because these are all being shared. And this oxygen has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, because these are all being shared. Uh, another example of double bonds is carbon dioxide, CO2. Oh, sorry, to go back to the oxygen, right? they can also be drawn as O, double bonded to O. Right, the single bond we saw in the uh, slide before was H single bonded to H, or F single bonded to F. A double bond has two lines. All right, back to carbon dioxide. So CO2 has a carbon in the middle, and carbon has four valence electrons. I'm going to draw them around them like so. And along comes the oxygens. One, two, Three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So here, right, this oxygen now has six electrons. I'm sorry, eight electrons around it, the six it brought, plus the two from the carbon. This oxygen has eight electrons around it, the six it brought, plus the two from the carbon. And the carbon has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight electrons around it. And this would be drawn as the carbon in the middle, double bonded to oxygen, and double bonded to the other oxygen. It's carbon dioxide. Okay. Example of a triple bond is what's called N2. 
right? And nitrogen, if you look on your periodic table, it's gonna have five valence electrons. So we say N, one, two, three, four, five. Then here I'm gonna use the X's again to distinguish who's bringing what to the party. One, two, three, four, five. So this nitrogen has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight electrons around it and this nitrogen has one two three four five six seven eight electrons around it fulfilling that octet rule for both and that triple bond is written as one two three bonds like so another type of oh, sorry another type that we're going to look at is what's called a coordinate covalent bond and a coordinate covalent bond is a type of covalent bond where one atom provides both shared electrons another way of saying that is the shared electron pair comes from only one of the bonding atoms so one provides them the other one is completely a free loader. All right, so here we have, for example, the ammonium ion. We're going to get into these polyatomic ions soon, but everybody's heard of ammonia, right? Ammonia is NH3. And we have, here's the N, an electron shared with a hydrogen, electron shared with another hydrogen, electron shared with another hydrogen and what's called the lone pair hanging out by itself up here right nitrogen had five valence electrons each hydrogen has one for a total of eight one two three four five six seven eight okay so now this is a neutral atom but along comes what's called a hydronium ion h y d r o n i that's a H plus ion. So along comes this hydrogen, right? And H plus is just a proton. There's no electrons. So here comes this hydrogen. Sees this lone electron pair. It's like, hey, I like me some electrons. Walks on up, and now it's just a mooch, a freeloader. Okay? But now, since this was neutral, and this H plus is positive, this entire thing is positively charged. So where NH3 was ammonia, O-N-I-A, now we have NH4+, plus, which is ammonium. Okay. You don't have to memorize it. It's on the reference table. And when we look at naming polyatomic ions in a couple of chapters, we'll go a little more into that. All right, so this is what's called a coordinate covalent bond where a pair of electrons is completely provided by one atom but shared by both. All right, one more slide to go through, and that's called bond disassociation energy. Now, early on, we're, we talked about how chemical bonds store energies, potential energy in chemical bonds. Uh, as the year goes on, we're going to at one point look at the actual amount of energy, but for now, we're just going to look at a definition. So bond dissociation energy is the energy required to break the bond between two covalently bonded atoms. And the amount of energy required has to do with the strength of the bond. So a large bond dissociation energy corresponds to a strong covalent bond. So then the flip side would be true as well. A weak dissociation energy corresponds to a weak covalent bond. All right, as always, feel free to rewind. If you have any questions, write them down, and we'll talk about them 
the day that this is due in class. Alrighty, that brings us to the end of 8.2, and I'll see you guys in school.